G'day guys, back again. We've got a 2005 Hyundai Sonata with a 2.4 litre petrol engine. It's coming for misfiring, so let's see if it's something interesting or just a run of the mill misfire. Getting the code scan done on it now. You see the check engine lights on, 169,000 Ks. Let's see what the code scan is doing. Uh, this is a pain in the ass with the Hyundai's. If I go back into this, it's, it's just a 2.4. Trying to search these, the VIN recognition doesn't work. And I found when I try to put the VIN number in, which usually brings it up, it actually doesn't load. So it's starting to shit me, to be honest with you. So I'll just do, I'm just going to do EOBD and just get the code that way. So bear with me, sorry about that. Should have just done that in the first place because this happened to me yesterday on another Hyundai. Just fast forward this. Let's go for cylinder four misfire. So let's take it inside, maybe start with the GTC 505 if I can get onto it and look for the uh, spark waveform and let's go from there. All right, so I've just unplugged all the coils. We'll quickly do a relative compression test. We, uh, I'll change that to four cylinders first. Go for it. Okay. Just analyzing right now. As you can see, all pretty good. Actually, all relatively even. GTC 505, why not? Just get it in there. Current ramp firstly. All looking good, so our coils definitely have supply. I'm not saying that one of them is not failing, but we definitely got supply, so let's change it to burn time. Let's look at burn time. I just need to hold this in the right spot, so bear with me. There we go. In the middle, there we go. In the middle of the coil. Oh, that's actually nicer on the side. There we go. And on the side of this one, we have got no spark occurring at all on number four. So oh, now that we've done that, I don't like unplugging these to see if we get a misfire because obviously we don't want to disturb wiring but now we know that this one's failing I just want to prove 100% it's not coiled uh, so we're going to swap them anyway you know, we'll pull the plug out and measure the resistance and see if it's open circuit but I'll swap these coils over anyway and let's do the same test again Alrighty, I'll swap 3 and 4 I haven't bolted them down, they stay down well so let's just get on the side you can see We've got a dead coil. So, like I showed you before, even though the current line was okay, it doesn't mean that that coil was actually firing the plug properly. So, we need a new coil, and we're going to take the plugs out anyway. It's going to get a set of plugs. It probably hasn't had one for ages, and we know that when plugs fail, they put high stress on the coil. So, it's going to get a set of plugs and a set of coils. Right, so before I go any further, I just want to show you what I mean by saying if we have a good current ramp, that doesn't necessarily mean we have a good coil. Obviously, looking at the uh, current ramp, so obviously, well, first of all, before you do that, let's just, you know, high level draw this. Um, just a typical system, right? Power, ground, uh, PCM control, uh, primary circuit, secondary circuit and then the spark plug itself right so when we're doing current ramp as you can see this current ramp the current ramp is of the primary side only so typically we can't really see much secondary wise on this part primary current ramp sometimes we can see the the oscillation starting at the start of the current ramp but that isn't necessarily true depending on the characteristics of the the cores themselves so obviously the, the current flow through this primary side is shown here so we can't see the secondary side at all but the important part of actually having this test is we've already eliminated four things from the system so 
by having a good current ramp that is comparative to the other cylinders we know that the primary side of the coil is good we know that our power and ground and our PCM control are good so we've just eliminated everything from the system and there's only two things left that it could be the secondary circuit inside the coil or the plug itself so hopefully you know that sort of makes sense to you but at this stage that's when we use the firing uh, the firing line or the burn time as such and we can see there's no spark these three things are good so it could still be a faulty coil or a faulty plug but at the end of the day it actually doesn't matter which one it is because if it's getting one it's getting the other because say we've got a faulty plug obviously this causes high load on the coils and that's going to prematurely wear the the new coil for example or, or wear that coil so if we need a plug only and we put a plug in it what to say in the next one month that customer comes back for the same misfire because this coil is already stressed out and actually dead and obviously if it needs a coil then what has caused that coil to fail prematurely is it a plug that has high resistance so to save you know the customer coming back and sending this out we want to do both together really you should be getting plugs all the plugs and all the coils anyway so hopefully that makes sense and um, yeah if you see what I mean by looking at that current ramp and not necessarily proving that that's a good coil but it does eliminate the primary circuit and all the control to the actual coil itself all right we're all done here we have to get NGK it was the only thing that was available um, NGK plugs NGK coils and all is running fantastic clear the codes what we, obviously what we did off camera i didn't get a chance to record it was just check the secondary waveform under load to make sure it wasn't lean because obviously our lean condition could also cause premature wear of these this ignition system anyway so uh, that's all good the car's fantastic and you know i guess what i want to know from you guys is what do you think about the speed of this diagnosis uh, with the GTC 505 and looking at the primary and secondary waveforms without taking anything apart uh, I don't think you can probably diagnose this any quicker um, would love to see your thoughts if you could diagnose it quicker or what you would do differently if you're old school and do the swapsies obviously I'll, I'll swap the calls just for you know just for the camera just to see if it's going to be the call or the plug but like I said in the little drawing that it doesn't have to be done you really need both anyway so hopefully that makes sense guys and uh, thanks for watching, appreciate it and we'll see you next time.